All right. I hope all of you had a pleasant weekend, or at least a weekend. Um, uh, I want to welcome uh, our visitors from the Edward R. Morrow Program for Journalists on UN Foreign Policy, uh, which is sponsored by the State Bar. The State Department, that's right, there we go. Uh, welcome. A um, couple of programming notes. Uh, at 3 p.m. this afternoon, the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, will uh, speak to member states about his report on our common agenda that he gave to the member states about 18 months ago. He will also speak on the preparations for the Summit of the Future that will be held next year. Um, the Secretary General is expected to warn that halfway to the 20 to 2030, we are far off track in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, and we will only make up lost ground by addressing gaps and challenges that have emerged since 2015, including gaps in intergovernmental cooperation. On climate, on conflict, on inequality, on food insecurity and nuclear weapons, we are closer to the edge than ever, he will say. Uh, he will also discuss some of the policy briefs that will be issued in preparation for the Summit of the Future, and his remarks were shared with you under embargo. His deputy, Amina Mohammed, uh, will travel to Oslo, Norway, to deliver keynote remarks and participate in an interactive discussion on the Oslo Energy Forum, which will be held in Oslo from the 14th to the 16th of uh, February. Um, this year's theme is, uh, quote, energy transition is the new risk reality. During the trip, she will also meet with senior government officials of Norway. The Deputy Secretary General will be back in New York uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, moving on to the response to the earthquake that hit uh, Turkey and Syria, our humanitarian partners are stressing that priority needs in the areas impacted by the earthquake include heavy machines for debris removal, medical supplies, including ambulances and medicine, shelter and non-food items, including heating, emergency food and water, sanitation and hygiene assistance. We continue to mobilize emergency relief uh, teams and op uh, relief operations. And at the government uh, of Turkey's request, a UN disaster assessment coordination team with a total of 50 members has been deployed to Gaziantep and to the three hubs uh, in the affected area to support the coordination of the international urban search and rescue operations and assist with situation and humanitarian needs analysis. Um, uh, UN uh, disaster assessment uh, coordination team, uh, liaison team rather, is in Turkey's disaster emergency management ministry who are leading the response. Um, a separate UN uh, DAC team composed of seven members reached Syria and is supporting the response in Aleppo, Latakia, and Homs. Um, currently, eight international rescue teams are working in the earthquake-impacted areas in Syria. Uh, the UN is working to rapidly scale up its assistance, including through cross-border aid operations into the northwest of Syria. Today, six trucks carrying food and non-food items from the World Food Program cross through the Bab al-Hawa crossing. Since the 9th of February, a total of 58 trucks loaded with essential humanitarian assistance crossed into the northwest Syria from southern Turkey. Uh, as you will have seen, um, Martin Griffiths, the head of our emergency relief operations, has been visiting areas impacted by the quake. He is today in Damascus. Uh, this morning he was in Aleppo and spoke to families who lost loved ones in their homes. He also met with uh, first responders and aid workers who have been working tirelessly to meet urgent humanitarian needs. He said the trauma of the people he spoke to in Aleppo was visible, and this is a trauma which the world needs to help heal. Mr. Griffiths said our obligation is to ensure shelter, food, schooling, psychosocial care, and a sense of the future for people impacted by the devastating earthquake. Uh, Mr. Griffiths also visited Turkey over the we weekend. He was in uh, Karaman Marash and in Gaziantep and met with families impacted by the disaster there. Also met with NGOs and UN colleagues involved in the response. He said the UN will make sure that people are not forgotten and that we stand, uh, we stand with them and we will continue to support them in any way we can. He also visited the transshipment center of the Turkish border, was encouraged by the scale-up of convoys. He called for more access points to be open and to get more aid as fast as possible. 
Over the weekend, you may have seen the remarks made by Dr. Tedros, the head of the World Health Organization. He spoke from Damascus after he saw firsthand the devastating impact of the quake and listened to the stories of survivors. He said WHO is providing medical supplies and working with partners to provide specialized medical care. So far, WHO distributed 110 tons of medical supplies to impacted areas throughout the Syrian Arab Republic. For its part, the World Food Program is on the ground in some of the most difficult-to-reach areas, distributing immediate food relief to families impacted by the quake, reaching around 142,000 people in Turkey and Syria so far. Um, I had been asked by some of your colleagues before the briefing about the um, decision taken by the, um, the announcement made by the cabinet, uh, security cabinet in Israel, and I can tell you uh, about the, regarding is settlements, and I can tell you that the Secretary General is deeply concerned by yesterday's announcement by the Israeli security cabinet that it has decided to authorize nine settlement outposts in the occupied West Bank. If these measures are implemented, they would further undermine prospects for a viable two-state solution. He reiterates that all settlements are illegal under international law and a substantial obstacle to peace. He calls for unilateral actions that erode the prospects for a political solution on the basis of United Nations resolutions, international law, and bilateral agreements to stop. Uh, speaking at the Security Council today uh, on a meeting on children in armed conflict, focusing on prevention, Virginia Gamba, the special representative of the Secretary General on Children in Armed Conflict, said they, they, this has never been more pertinent or urgent. As her office is preparing its annual report for 2022, she said that trends showing high level of violations against children are continuing. Ms. Gamba added that understanding and identifying the pre-existing risks and vulnerabilities to children will be critical to protecting them and preventing violations of their rights once they occur. Uh, excuse me, of once conflicts occurs. Uh, going forward, she pointed to the robust tools and initiatives developed to protect children, but she also called for more national strategies or common approaches to prevention. The special representative on violence against children, Dr. Najat Malamjid, also spoke at the meeting. Uh, two updates from our peacekeeping missions in Africa. First one from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where fighting continues between the Congolese Army and the M22. 23 rebel group, including around the Sake Kichanga axis and within the Virunga National Park in North Kivu province. Uh, last Friday, the M23 took control of Bukumbo, 13 kilometers east of Kichanga, prompting population displacement towards Goma. The peacekeeping mission continues its engagement in Goma with various communities and local leaders to discuss the security and humanitarian situation in the province as well as anti-MONUSCO sentiments, which hampers access to communities in need of immediate assistance, especially in the area around Kichanga. Separately, in Ituri province, according to preliminary reports, the armed group known as Kodeko killed at least 20 civilians yesterday and burned several houses. They reportedly also damaged medical infrastructures in a string of attacks against villages in Jungu territory. At the same time, another armed group, the ADF, attacked two villages in Urumu territory, which resulted in at least 12 civilians killed, um, according to our reports. Uh, we have an update from South Sudan, where around 400 women leaders from across the country and, the African, um, and Africa have gathered in the first international conference on women's trans transformational leadership. Over the next three days, the participants will discuss women's leadership and governance, climate change, economic challenges, access to education, gender-based violence, and many other issues impacting women and girls in South Sudan. In her opening remarks um, at the conference, which is supported by the peacekeeping mission, UN Women, UNDP, and other UN entities, the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General there, uh, Sara Besolo Nyanti, cited the resilience and determination of South Sudanese women as inspirational. She also said that without women's full and equal participation in the leadership, uh, South Sudan will not move forward on its journey from conflict to peace and development. The top priority is to increase women's representation, political and security institutions to meet or exceed the 35% target set in the 2018 peace agreement. 
Discussions will also focus on preparations for the country's first elections as a sovereign state due to be held in December of next year. Uh, today is world... The fact that the answer to that question is correct, it is not the right answer. Today is World Radio Day, and at the global level, uh, radio remains the most widely consumed medium, uh, and the theme for this year is radio and peace. Um, radio offers an alternative mythology of conflict prevention by clearing frustration or clashes, interests, and clearing misunderstanding and identifying issues of mistrust. And I've always been told I had a great face for radio. <laughs> um, lastly, some good news on the money front. We now have 43 member states on the honor roll, and we thank our friends in Paris, New Delhi, Lisbon, and Bratislava, which are? Slovakia. Slovakia. There you go. France, India, and Portugal. Edie. Uh, thank you very much, Steph. Uh, First and foremost, uh, both Martin Griffiths and Gar Peterson have met with the Syrian foreign minister, and Peterson said afterwards about um, getting more aid to the Northwest. Uh, we think that is now being corrected. Does that mean that there will be more cross-border openings from uh, Turkey or elsewhere into northern Syria? We are working on all fronts uh, to move more aid in. Uh, the Secretary General's message is clear. Uh, I think we need that. We need to ensure that every pathway uh, to bringing more aid into Syria, including the Northwest, is open and used freely, free of any restrictions. Uh, and for that, we need all parties to put uh, any politics aside. The aim is to help people and to reach as many people as possible. That, that didn't answer my question. Well, I, you With know, they, the, no, 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 uh, all, no, no respect needed. Um, it is clear. You know, we haven't, we haven't been able to announce a new uh, cross-line convoy. Uh, it's in the works. Uh, for those convoys to work, we need green lights all the way down the line, right? Uh, we've had very positive, we've had positive uh, discussions with, uh, with the government. It's given us some, uh, some assurances. Uh, we're waiting for all parties to give us those, those green lights. Um, we understand we're operating in a more than challenging environment, uh, given the, the 12 years of, of conflict. Uh, but I think one can only look at the, at the pictures that are coming out of, of Syria uh, as if anyone needed more motivation uh, to help remove uh, barriers. As soon, as soon as we have confirmed information that a cross line, a convoy will go, we will share that with you. And what about cross border convoys from uh, the other crossing points that were closed? There were once four of them, as I'm sure I, you I, recall. I do recall. Um, as, as United Nations, right now, we're only authorized to use one crossing. It is our understanding that other organizations not linked to the UN are using other other crossings. Um, we would like to see, uh, we would like to have the ability to use as, uh, to use more pathways uh, with, with more aid. For that, our discussions are ongoing. Uh, Michelle and then Kristen. Uh, just to follow up on that, following the meetings in Damascus uh -huh. today, has the Syrian government um, agreed to allow the UN to use more cross-border Mr. Uh, Griffiths met with President Assad a short while ago. We're still waiting for a readout of uh, of that meeting. But we've we've had uh, we've had discussions with the Syrian government uh, since the earthquake uh, happened. We're we're it, it, it's a matter of as I said, getting all the green lights down down the track so we can move forward. So, <coughs> if this. If the Syrian government, though, if President Assad agrees to 
reopen two border crossing points, as Martin Griffiths has said is needed? And can you tell us which two those are? Uh, you no, names? I cannot. You no. don't have names. Um, if President Assad has agreed to that today, is that enough for the UN to get going, or does the UN prefer to also the, the, have this resolution from the Security Council? Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at the point that there are a lot of delicate discussions ongoing, uh, and I don't want to say anything that would jeopardize our ability to move forward quickly. Obviously, I think it's one of these things that the, the proof will be in the pudding. Once you see us using different crossings, you know we'll have gotten the permissions that we need. So the Secretary General said on Thursday that mm -hmm. he'd be very happy if the Security Council mm -hmm. approved more crossings. Martin Griffiths said on Saturday he knit two more crossings are needed mm -hmm. on top of the one they're already mm -hmm. using. Is the Security Council moving quickly enough well, for the... the... Mr Griffiths will brief the Security Council on a closed meeting this afternoon. Um, it, it's clear that everyone could move more quickly on getting things done. Ms Salome. Just following up on the cross line, <clears throat> can you... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, can you give us any more detail on the parties that are um, that you're waiting for to come through, and, and any more details on the challenges on cross line as well? I mean, the, I, I, I'm not going to go into the granularity of the discussions. Uh, the challenges are are obvious. The security challenges being uh, being the greatest. We want to make sure that those uh, people who are driving the trucks are safe. Uh, we have, since the beginning of the, since the, this disaster hit, been distri distributing aid through partners that was pre-positioned in the Northwest. We've mentioned this last week. We have had the trucks, I think 56 uh, trucks or 58 trucks have gone. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, at least you're paying attention to what I'm saying. Um, We've had the the trucks go through. Those are being distributed through uh, through local partners. So some aid is getting it, but it is clear that you know a lot of the aid that is needed is heavy equipment, is excavation, is search and rescue teams, which the UN does not have a standing capacity of. So the international community as a whole needs to step up to get that aid where it's needed. If to some and then Linda. Um, a follow-up on uh, your l last remark. I mean, uh, you you said that you are you don't have the equipment and that you are coordinating. But did you ask uh, the international community to bring this equipment uh, to we, North Syria? I mean, I, I think Mr. Griffiths could not be clearer in the messages that he passed over the weekend about asking the international community to send more help to where it's needed. The the question is obviously one of the aid. Uh, coming through uh, and the the uh, the access um, the access that is also uh, is a challenge uh, we expect in the coming days uh, to launch an appeal uh, both for Turkey and Syria uh, which will have more details in terms of, of what is needed especially on the on the cash front just to follow up, when you talk about uh, access and challenge, does this also include Bab el Hawa? I mean, because although you have the permission to deliver aid through Bab el Hawa, but it doesn't seem to be that you are using the, all the capacity you can use. Uh, we we from are Bab -Hawa. using as much as we can, and we are getting trucks uh, in. Obviously, it's not as if, I mean, um, it, it, it's not as if nothing had happened in southern. Turkey, so we're just getting as many trucks. We're also dealing of dealing with a situation that we're sending aid from an area that is also devastated and has been hard hit. So there are logistical challenges, there are damages. Uh, we're trying to overcome as, uh, them as, as much as, as we can, and we are using the border crossing to the best of our ability. Linda, <clears throat> then Murad, and then Deji. Thank you, Steph. Um, about, is it about 10% of the aid has been delivered to Northwest Syria that is anticipated is needed? And secondly, um, since there are some non-governmental non organizations and other groups going through their, you know, other areas not abiding by the one border, 
Um, how significant do you think those deliveries have been in terms of contributing to what's there? Well, I, yeah, I don't have the breakdown of the percentages. Uh, the aid that we've been able to deliver in terms of preposition aid was um, a number of, it was some food, uh, shelter, WHO had prepositioned aid as well. Most of the aid that came in prior to today was non-food items, uh, shelter kits uh, and things related to shelter. UNFPA also sent kits uh, to support uh, support specific needs of women. Some food also went in today. Um, but it is clear that more needs to be done. Uh, and we're trying to do more, but the international community as a whole needs to do more, both on, on the political side in a way to remove barriers and on the volume side in terms of bringing more aid, uh, more aid in. But in terms of the, the non-UN groups, the NGOs, the non-state actor distributors, so to speak, I mean, how much, I mean, how significant have they really just contributed, got it, gotten a little bit of aid? I, I, don't have, I, I don't have visibility on what aid groups are doing outside of the UN structure. Murad and then Deji. Thank you, Stephen. Any updates uh, regarding the extent of damage and uh, destruction on, uh, historic, on the historic sites in Syria and Turkey? Uh, not more than what we had from UNESCO last week. I know they were trying to, to do some assessments. We'll see if we can get an update from you. But clearly, uh, a lot of historic sites that had been standing for centuries uh, were either damaged or, or destroyed. Deji. I do have the readout uh, of the meeting between uh, Martin Griffiths and, and uh, President Assad. I'm glad Accor you get your email while I'm uh, on the podium. Yeah. According to, <laughs> according to the um, Syrian Arab uh, news agency, the president affirmed that the need to, for bringing the urgent aid to all areas in Syria, including those that are subjected to occupation and the do do dominance of what they call the armed terrorist groups, um, is this what what you're referring to when you said the positive response? I, I I'm not Deji I. I appreciate the, the urgency of reacting immediately. Uh, but let me get a readout from, from Mr. Griffiths, mm. uh, and I will get back to you. Uh, when we talk about the, the cross-line uh, operation, you said you, you got positive response from, from the government, mm -hmm. and you said there are multiple parties that need mm -hmm. to work out. Mm -hmm. So for, 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 for which party do you have not get positive response or still waiting I, for you know, response? I, I don't think active finger pointing at this point would be helpful in us getting the result that we want, which is to get the aid in. But so far, do you have a schedule for that, for the, for the uh, cross line? As soon as possible as, is the as, schedule. I mean, I mean your as soon as possible, as soon as practicable is the, is the schedule. Okay. Uh, Amelia, and then we'll go to the screen. Thanks, Steph. I have a completely different question on DRC. Uh, you mentioned several attacks yesterday. Uh, our colleagues, my colleagues in Kinshasa, said that it was even more confusing than usual to get any kind of information of what happened. Can you give, you said, according to prelim preliminary report, right. there are 20 civilians killed by Codeco. Uh, do you have any uh, more details, information? What are these? report coming from? Who are they coming from and, and, and where it happens and I mean, what happened? To say the situation is confusing uh, would be a correct statement. Uh, I'm not holding back on anything that I, so I, I've shared with you what I have. Uh, these reports come from information received by uh, the peacekeeping mission. They are obviously challenged uh, in many places by their ability to, uh, to move around. Um, but it's, I will try to get squeeze a bit more information for you on that. Uh, Abdel Hamid, and then uh, we'll go to Iftikhar online. Abdel Hamid? Uh, on February 3rd, Mr. Winsland issued a statement condemning killing a six year old Israeli boy. Today, a sniper, an Israeli sniper, killed a young Palestinian in Jenin. His name is Kusai Radwan Yusuf Wakid. I sent you, 
I sent uh, Farhan Haq the statement about his killing from uh, children uh, for, for protection of children, organization for protection of children. Would he issue similar statement using the word condemn killing of a young Palestinian by a sniper at the distance of 550 meters? Uh, too many times, and we're seeing it more and more, uh, is a growing number of civilians, including women and children, who have been killed uh, in this spiral of violence. Uh, Mr. Venislan, I think, has been very clear, and we continue to be not only deeply disturbed, but saddened uh, by all of this. What is important is that all concerned parties take immediate steps to reduce tensions and break this deadly cycle. Iftikhar. Uh, thank you, Steph. All questions about the big earthquake have been asked. So therefore, I uh, ask you, I, mean, I'm to, uh, I refer you to your statement that you read out about Israeli uh, security cabinet's decision to create more settlements. Uh, every time Israel makes this uh, more, creates more settlements. The same statement is issued that it erodes the prospects of uh, uh, of uh, two-state solution. But does it now pose a threat to international peace and security? Well, you know, we, we the, the Secretary General, through his various representatives, reports regularly back uh, to the Security Council. On, uh, on the issue of, uh, of Israel-Palestine, which, is, uh, which is on the on, on, on topic of those, uh, one of the topics the Security Council regularly um, regularly discusses. I really don't have anything to add to what we've, uh, we've already said uh, already said on the issue and have said quite a number of times, I might add. Uh, Edie and then Michelle. On two different uh, issues, Steph. Uh, first, the Cambodian Prime Minister has ordered the closure of, I believe, the last independent radio station in the country. Does the Secretary General have any comment? Uh, well, we've seen uh, the expression of, of alarm uh, by our human rights uh, commissioner, Volker Turk, and his, his concern at the arbitrary decision. Um, the Secretary General fully supports uh, what Mr. Turk has said on this issue. And on Haiti, um, we know and it's been reported that there have been a lot of kidnappings, but um, yesterday, Three worshippers were kidnapped uh, and are being held for ransom as they left church services. Does the Secretary General have any it, comment it, it, on It that? is yet another uh, heinous representation of the violence uh, that men, women, and children have to face um, in Haiti. And uh, we hope they are released and released quickly and unharmed. Michelle Van Deji. I'm sorry, on Afghanistan, uh -huh. um, can we get any kind of update on sort of how the UN is going on working there under yeah. the new restrictions yeah. and um, what challenges you're facing? Are you noticing any wariness from donors given these new I rules? will try to get you, uh, I will not only try, I will get you an update, Michelle. Deji. For the past couple of days, we noticed that uh, the U.S. shut down multiple um, objects, high-altitude objects, and it, you know it's octangular sphere cylinder. Uh, but before this, we never heard of this. Now, sh does the UN think this should be discussed as the threat of international peace and stability of those high-altitude objects? I, I really don't have anything to say on this to be honest. Uh, but if I do, I will let you know. Okay. So uh, another <laughs> thing, sorry. Um, you know, on Sunday, the US Air Force General said they does not rule out that it might be aliens object. I was Should waiting for concerned? you to bring that up. 
<laughs> yeah. I have, I have uh, enough challenges on commenting on earthly things that I will not comment on potential UFOs. Okay. <laughs> on that note, uh, thank you, and another welcome to our uh, visitors from this planet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Paulina briefed you, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, good.